Derek's here. Derek, come on in. Started late. I know. I had a few things to finish up. I'm sorry. I want you to look at everything in this room that's out of place. And I'd like you to leave them that way. Have a seat. Please. I'm going to help you with that. Ignore everything else in the room. Let it all melt away. Just focus on me. Let's work on her breathing. Okay. Deep breath in. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. The name's Walt. The, the dedication, who are the initials? A family member? A patient. Wow, really? He must be very special to you. They all are. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. I wanted you to sign my book. You know, you didn't have to come all the way down here. I would have gladly signed one at my office. Well, I know how you feel about boundaries, but you've done so much for me, I just wanted to show my support. Well, thank you for your support. I'll see you next week. Wednesday, 10 a.m. Sharp. I will try not to be late. Who would you like your book signed to? Actually, I just wanted to meet you. Well, nice to meet you. I don't think you realize how much you've affected people's lives. Well, I hope that my work can make a difference, even if it's just a little bit. Taking off. It's like I'm dating a celebrity. Does that work for you? Yeah. It's fulfilling a childhood fantasy. Ooh, how revealing. And there it is. The doctor's never far from the conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. Just with all these book signings, it's hard to get her to work much, you know. But I only have one more, and then I'm all yours. What you said before the symposium, and before that, it was the lecture at the university. It's always something. Jason, I'm... It's all right. One of the reasons I fell in love with you. You were so devoted to sacrificing everything for everyone else. I just wish I was more than your happy hour. Oh, I hate that you feel like that. Hmm. And I'm sorry, you're right. Can I make you dinner this week? 
I don't think I can do till Thursday. Thursday's fine. This was a good week. Just had a few episodes of anger at inanimate objects. Um, some semi-violent fantasies about people that drove too slow. But they were just fantasies. But they were just fantasies. Good. Um, oh, I went to the laundromat, put in my clothes. I left for about a half hour. I came back. Somebody had left the dryer door open and didn't restart the cycle. So my clothes were wet. So how did you react? I did my breaths. Closed the door. We started the cycle. It's fantastic. I'm very proud of you. The old Derek would have rewashed everything. Oh, I did. Several times, actually. Scrubbed. Until they were spotless. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh -huh. That's very good. Uh, you got me. Gotcha. I think that's a good note to end on. Okay. I'll see you next Wednesday at 10. Okay. Will that be cash or check? Check, I will never pay in cash. Right. What was I thinking? All done. Okay, you're gonna want to give that directly to Dr. Wrightmore when she calls you in. Blair? I'll take that. Thank you. I'll be in in a second. Is everything okay? Yeah. yeah. Let's just see you uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> Bye. 10 a.m. Yes. Do you have any details for my talk at the university today? Oh, that was postponed. There was a meningitis outbreak on campus, so Professor Whedon thought it best to reschedule. You need to tell me these things. I put it in your calendar. It's still in here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hi. You were at the book signing, weren't you? Yes. I had made an appointment, but I felt like I wanted to meet you in a more casual setting first. Well, I'm glad I didn't scare you away. Have a seat. That's great. I should let you know up front, I like to record all my sessions with my clients. It just lets me be totally present, not have to worry about taking notes. I hope you're comfortable with that. I guess if that's what you do with everyone. Okay. So you already know a little bit about me, how I conduct my practice. Why don't you start by telling me a little something about yourself? Like what? Something brought you to my door. <laughs> I'm having trouble sleeping. I wake up every night and I'm drenched in sweat. My heart's racing and I, I feel like I had a nightmare, but I, I can't remember. How often does this happen? Every night. I'm sorry. <laughs> when did your sleep disruption start? After my divorce. But they've just gotten worse lately. Was your divorce amicable? I guess. But it just ended so quickly. I mean, <laughs> one day he just left. Would you like to talk about that? <laughs> I 
I know that this is hard. But if I'm going to help you, then we have to be completely open with each other. It's just so hard to talk about this with someone who is so perfect. I have failures that I struggle with every day. And every day I get a little bit stronger. And it's overcoming those failures that has made me into a better person. Your turn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Blair. Blair. This was a bad idea. Blair, wait. Blair! I didn't mean to waste your time. You haven't. Please just come back inside. This was a mistake. I want to help you. You can't. Nobody can. Don't say that. We can make it better if we work together. We just need to set some goals. Like what? First, we need to know what your dream is about. We'll just start with one single detail. Keep a pen and a notepad by your desk, and when you wake up, just write. I want to be here to help you through it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but we can do this if we do it together. You promise? <laughs> I promise. surprises and I'm still coming on Thursday mm -hmm. don't think that this changes anything <laughs> You know I'm a professional secret keeper, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. How was your day? Well, this really smelly guy named John started an accounting, and that's pretty much the most exciting thing that happened to me today. Until I came here. <laughs> Good save. Thanks. These are really pretty, by the way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So are you. You're just saying that because you want me to give you something special for dessert. Oh, my grandmother always said, you should start with dessert because you never know what could happen. I thought I already gave you dessert. I was always allowed seconds. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. I love cooking for you. I wasn't talking about the food. No! <laughs> I can't. I still have work to do tonight. All right. Just a bit, though. I'm gonna get going. Um, sorry. No, it's, it's I'm all, almost done. It's all right, it's all right. Tonight was wonderful. What do you say we go away for a weekend? No computers, no phones? No, nothing. I like you nothing. I like you nothing a lot. <laughs> We've established that. I'm having trouble sleeping. I 
wake up every night and I'm drenched in sweat. My heart's racing and I I feel like I had a nightmare, but I, I can't remember. Jason, you're relentless. So, were you able to take any notes? That's all I could remember. A sound. And now it's all I hear. It's still here. It's a tick, 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 tick. Well, if your dream is starting to take shape, then that's a positive thing. It's good. We can work on that for a couple of months. Months? I'm drowning. I can't live with that sound for another week. Well, there is a more aggressive technique that we could try. How much do you know about hypnotherapy? Just what I read in your book. Mental comfort food? No, your first book. Really? You tracked that down? I can't believe you read that. <laughs> just, just parts. I want to try to use hypnotherapy to dig into this dream you have hiding in your subconscious. You're not gonna mess with my brain or anything, are you? No, no, of course not. Look at it like an archeological dig. I'm only going to uncover what's already there. I mean, if, if you think that's the way to go. I do. I want you to envision yourself in an elevator. You're safe. The door's closed. You feel yourself descend. You're on the 10th floor. And your body feels heavy. And strong. And you're very relaxed. Ninth floor. Let your feet settle into the floor. Solid. Safe. Let your body surrender all of its weight. Your hips. Your back. Your head. Fourth floor. You feel deeply peaceful. All is well. Deep breaths. In. The elevator doors open. You're safe. What do you see? I, I can't see anything. It's too dark, please. Please don't make me go in there. There's a light switch just outside the elevator. It controls the lights for the whole room. All you have to do is reach out and flip it on. Please, please don't die. Please don't die. 
Listen to my voice. Get into the elevator. I'm going to bring you back up. It's just in your mind. You need to get in the elevator. You need to come back. Everything here is safe. You're safe. Feel the elevator. Moving slowly upwards, away from your dream. The distance brings you a sense of calm, coming back into this safe place. You're coming back in three, two, one. Open your eyes. Okay, you're in my office, Blair. You're safe. This is a breakthrough. It's good. Now we know the source of your nightmares. I've never killed anybody in my life. I know. It was a manifestation. Something that we can dissect and interpret. It was never meant to be literal. It felt so real. I know. I know. Take a moment. Sit down. Okay? <laughs> Sit down. Look, I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but this has been a very positive step. What's happened, Blair? He's dead. He's dead. I killed him. Hi. It's me. Can I come see you? Hi, Edmund. Well, hello, Vicky. I hate when you call me that. Hmm. Why do you think I still do it? <laughs> That's it. Weird being back here. I miss it. Well, if you like, we can move you back in next door. Nobody will mind. I'm glad you called. I was under the assumption that a certain best-selling author had grown beyond her past. Ah, oh, it's impossible. Isn't there an old saying that students are merely reflections of their professors? It must be some kind of gibberish like that. I hope you don't mind when I grovel for a signed copy of your latest book. I like when you grovel. <laughs> well, if that's the case, when can I expect my first royalty check? What you taught me was invaluable. I'm sure we can come up with a fair price. So what can this old doc help me with? One of my patients. We had a very interesting hypnotherapy session. I wanted to explore more, but her reaction was so severe. I think you're intentionally leaving something out. That this bears resemblance to Dylan McNaught. Yeah. I thought so too. You specialize in dreams and hypnotherapy. Eventually, you're bound to get cases that are similar. In our field, this dream is not too uncommon. I think this is just a coincidence. Have you taken any time off since um, you left? I didn't come here to talk about me. I did. And I should tell you, that I don't practice that type of therapy anymore. I don't use hypnotherapy to meddle into people's dreams and memories. Too often, wires can get crossed. You of all people should understand that. 
So you just quit? I'm surprised that you are not a little more gun shy about this. Poor choice of words. Look, after McNault, I reassessed the value of practicing it regularly. And I thought you were too. That's one of the reasons why I thought you left. Your techniques still hold value. Leave it for addictions like smoking and, and, and binge eating. In the worst case scenario, someone has to count calories for the rest of their life. Are you still having the dreams? Maybe if I'd been able to reach out to his family. Vicky, we had to respect their wishes. <clears throat> So do you have any guidance for me? Because I could really use some right now. The only guidance I have for you is to be careful. We both know that you have a tendency to get close. Victoria. I'm glad to see you like this. You look good. Thank you. You look happy. I got my doctor to thank for that. Last night was the first good sleep I've had in a while. Well, you can thank yourself, too. We did this together. I love you. I'm your doctor. Nothing more. But there's something here. I didn't just imagine it. I mean, you see inside me, inside my soul. I'm in a relationship. I'm happy. I can't be your doctor anymore. So we can be together. That's never gonna happen. You're gonna wake up in the morning and realize this was a huge mistake. You should go. Whatever happens next, I'll be with you. Excuse me. Hey. Hey. What are you doing here? I have a book for you to sign. I already signed one for you. Well, I bought another one. You know, even though you're boosting my book sales, we're going to talk about this at your next session. I'm just supporting you. And I appreciate your support. Listen, um, after this, whenever it ends, I'm free. If you want to grab a cup of coffee or just what dinner, I mean. Derek. Yeah? It's been a really long day. I'm just going to go straight home. Sir, I suggest you go. Don't make the mistake of touching me. Back out of my space. Okay. Get out of my space. Back. Okay. Derek, I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Ugh.
scare you. Nancy said you'd be coming back here. What's wrong? I see it every night. The death of that man. Please help me. Please. Let's go to my office. Hey, Jason. Um, I'm gonna have to cancel tonight. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for doing this. I really hope I didn't take you away from something important. Nah, he'll understand. Um, I'm gonna make myself some tea. Would you like some tea? Yes, please. I know I have green tea here, and I think Nancy has chamomile in her desk. Chamomile would be nice. days have disappeared. I don't recall anything. Well, I think that's pretty normal. You know, it's easy to get caught up in your daily routine. But this feels like, like a trance. Like blackouts. You know, like you mentioned in your first book. My condition's very rare. I've only experienced it twice. What does it feel like? It's disturbing. Imagine what it's like to go to sleep in the comfort of your own bed and wake up in the grocery store. No idea where you've been, what you've done. It's, um, it's terrifying. But what if that's what happened to me? What if I was in some kind of a trance and I killed that man and I don't remember? No. We're not going to go down that path. It was a dream. A nightmare. That's it. And we're going to take control. Tonight, I want you to think about your dream before you go to bed. And that will help dictate your actions once you drift off. And then I want you to imagine talking to this man, engaging him in conversation. I want you to ask him, ask him why he's there. What does he want from you? I don't think I could do that. Then you're not going to get better. <laughs> If it helps, if it gives you any kind of comfort, imagine that I'm with you. But it has to be you who engages with him. <sighs> Do you want to tell me how you're feeling? What's wrong, Derek? This is Things are not in order, Victoria. It's Dr. Reitmar. Oh, <laughs> okay. Can we talk about what happened at the bookstore? Look, I'm just gonna make you a deal. All right? Take the paintings. Do whatever you want with the paintings. Sit, screw them up. I don't care. Can I please just put the books back? Can I just... Put the books back the way they were, okay? Thank you. What happened? We were progressing so nicely. I really like you. I like you too, as your doctor. Derek, you need to remember this is a doctor-patient relationship. Do you understand that? 
it because of him? What do you mean when you say him? If you continue down this path, we're going to make alternate arrangements. But you're going to get rid of me? I didn't say that. But we might have to see each other monthly instead of weekly. Allow some distance to grow between us. I thought that we were going to be seeing more of each other, not less. If this acting out is your way of forcing that, then we need to add more time between our sessions. <sighs> I know this seems harsh, but I need to be very firm with you. I don't want to jeopardize your progress. Can I leave? Derek. I need to leave. Nancy, can you come in here, please? I need you to run down to the SFU Medical Library and pick up these books. Now? Yeah. Well, what about your afternoon appointments? Um, can you cancel them for me? Except for Blair Bennett. Nancy? <laughs> Nancy, if you're still one. here, could you at least answer the phones? <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. I was just leaving. She was just leaving. Always getting the girls in trouble, aren't you, Edmund? Well, sort of my forte. I was just in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by, brighten up your day. And check up on me? <laughs> Let's get a cup of coffee. Okay. say that I blame him for developing a crush on this doctor. I need Dr. Silman right now, not Edmund. Right. You know, he's never showed any sign of transference before the bookstore. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it. Well, my suggestion is to give him some firmer boundaries, more limitations. Show him that there's a clear line between you and him. No, I made it very clear that there would be consequences. And how did he take it? He bolted from my office. Do you think he's a threat? I mean, a physical threat? Mm. Not to me, maybe, maybe to himself. I can't have this happen again. You know, Victoria, if you're worried that he's a threat, you can declare him 5150. I don't think we're at that point yet. I don't think he's suicidal. Why well, wouldn't be afraid to use it? I'm not. Do you think I am? Do you think I should use it on McNall? I didn't say that. That's what it sounds like. How is your hypnosis case? <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> the real reason for your visit. <laughs> what happened to be careful? I thought maybe I could elaborate on my advice a little, if you'd let me. 
I mean, I know I can be a, a tad on the curmudgeonly side sometimes. It comes with getting wise and old age. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rankmar. Claire. Wow. You look great today. It's all because of you. Last night was the first good sleep I've had in a while. That's great. I'm proud of you. Come on. I want to hear everything. What is it? My computer and my recorder. They're gone. So somebody has it? They could be listening to everything that I told you? To everything that I said? Blair. Blair. Who's the last one here? I was. What about your assistant? I sent her out to run some errands for me. Uh -huh. Did she know you were going to be gone? No. A colleague came by and took me out for some coffee. Well, I need that colleague's information. You keep narcotics here? I don't medicate my patients. I'll take that as a no then, huh? That's a no. Look, it is very important that I get my computers back. Especially my laptop and my recorder. I record all of my patient sessions, and they're all on there. And there were a couple of older case files that were taken. And some of them are very important to me. Any problems with any of your patients lately? You mean anyone that would do this? Yeah. No. Nothing that violent. Okay. Well, we done? So I got pretty much everything I need. If you think of anything else, give me a call. Whoa. What happened? We had a break-in. Okay. I can clean up. No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Did you get the books? No, they were closed. Well, I wish you'd called ahead and not just run off. I'm sorry. I was just doing what you wanted me to. It's fine. Let's take the afternoon. The only message was Jason's. He said he was coming by to pull you away for lunch. You're not saying much. Don't have anything to say. You called me, I thought maybe you had something to say. I just wanted to see my man. Am I still your man? Of course you are. I thought maybe things had changed. Why would you think that? I don't know. You've been so distant lately. Thought maybe I pushed you too hard or there was someone else. Babe. Hey. Are you kidding me? Baby, how can you even think that? I mean, look at you. You're so handsome. And you're successful. And you're so sweet to me. I'm sorry I've been out of touch. Babe, uh, hey, what happened? I punched the wall. 
Why did you do that? I got angry. I'm allowed to get angry, all right? I never said you weren't. No, I can feel your psychoanalysis kicking in. I knew you'd never plan anything for yourself or for us, so... I spent the last week organizing a weekend away for us. You did? When I found the perfect place, I rushed over to see you. And I saw you coming out of your office with him. I got jealous and I punched the wall. In my office? Jason, you know the police have already been there. They dusted for prints. What are you trying to say? I'm saying if you broke into my office because you're pissed off at me, that's fine. But I need my laptop back. I need my recorder. Jason! I need to leave before I punch something else. I just want to apologize. I feel terrible about what happened. Can we please just talk? Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. I just, I just wanted to check in before the police came to see you. Why would they want to talk to me? Because of the break-in. But I don't know anything. I was with you. And that's what I told them, but they probably still have some questions for you. Anyway, the first night I put you there with me, I was able to approach the man. But when I touched him, I woke up. Well, that's a good first step. And these things take time. You can't expect it to resolve itself overnight. I guess. But the second night, I talked to him. Well, that's incredible. So what did he say? Who was he? I think you know. It being after the divorce and all. Your ex-husband. Well, it did seem like the most logical person. He said he was sorry. For everything. He asked for my forgiveness. What did you do? He was the one person who understood me. And he abandoned me. I was furious. Without thinking, the gun appeared in my hand and I pointed it straight at him. And did you? I was so tired of being angry put the gun down, and I forgave him. That's wonderful. So what about the dreams? They've stopped. I feel so liberated, at peace. I feel like me again. And it's all because of you. No. This was all you. Jason? <sighs> Jason, if you're trying to scare me, I'm not in the mood. Jason?
help me. I need an ambulance right away. in this room. I brought you here so we could talk privately. <sighs> Do you remember? Of course. It's all my fault. Come again? It's just we had a fight earlier. I accused him of being the one who trashed my office. Did he? No. Oh. Well, of course not. After he had seen me leave my office with a colleague, we both jumped to conclusions we shouldn't have. So do you have any idea who did this? No. No? You have no idea? Who would write a note saying, no, we can be together? No, that kind of note? Is that what you're saying? Trust is a very important part of my profession, Detective. Yeah, as in mine, Doctor. Okay. I don't have anything else to say to you. so much. All right, all right, I'm gonna open it. Derek, open up, it's the manager. I'm gonna come in. It's a closet. Bathroom and bedroom are the next two. Victoria! When we talked, I told you to wait for me. Now you gotta go. Come on. You should tell the police. All I have is a suspicion. If he did do it, I drove him to it. Vicky, you can't think that way. I just want to find him. Hey, Victoria. Doctor. Detective. So I spoke to your assistant. Posed the same questions to her that I did to you. Funny name rolled right off her tongue, just like that. Funnier still. Here you are at the same man's place. I wanted to make sure he hadn't hurt himself. I was going to talk to him. If he did it, I was going to have him turn himself in. That's my job. It's a criminal matter now. So do me a favor. 
Let me know if there's any other suspicions you may have about any other clients. Of course. So if he did do it, what do you think set him off? He was becoming overly attached to me, to our routine. So I threatened to change his schedule. For an obsessive compulsive, that's nothing to scoff at. It can mean everything. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Victoria. Place. That's where. Do you mean our appointment? I mean the Paradiso Hotel, room 515. You promised me that you would be there. You're supposed to love me. You told me you loved me. I never said. Sorry, I didn't mean. I didn't, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, please. I didn't mean it. It's just it. You're messing with my head. I don't understand. What game are you playing with me? Did you break into my office to punish me? I did that all for you. How's that possibly for me? Love me? You told me that we could be together and you told me to break into your stupid office. Yes, you did, Victoria. Why would I ask you to do that? Is this some kind of sick uh, psychiatric game that you're playing with me? Is this a test to see how much I love you? Is this like the, uh, the books and the, and the picture frames? I want to understand. Second man in your life in two days. Maybe I should start looking over my shoulder. Do you think this is a joke? Joke? No, it's not a joke at all. There are a lot of questions, aren't there? Derek became attached to me. 
Mm. It happens sometimes in my profession. It's called transference. Oh, what? He created some wild fantasy in his head where he and I had more than a doctor-patient relationship. He thought that Jason was the only thing that stood between us, and then when he took him out of the picture, he didn't understand why I still denied him. He couldn't distinguish between truth and fiction. Well, hopefully if he doesn't die, he'll have the very same rational explanation. Oh, Kenny, he's not rational. Oh, that's right. There's only one rational explanation, and that's yours, apparently. <laughs> what are you implying? Well, you're in a robe with a patient in your room in the middle of the night. What do you mean, what am I implying? He what do you think into my I'm house. implying? I didn't exactly have time to pick out a suit. All right, we'll give you guys a minute. That's a great idea. Again. No, no, stop this. He's still alive. Yeah, for now. Victoria, listen to me. Look at my eyes. Look. He's alive. Let that in. Everything was normal. No, no, I still do. What can't I see? What am I missing? Sometimes misdiagnosis happens. This was a complete schizophrenic break. I mean, how could I miss that? All right, okay, all right. Just, just take some deep breaths. This is not your fault. Can I talk to you a minute? Alone. I would consult a lawyer before you say another word to this gentleman. All right? I don't have anything to hide. Do you, uh, recognize this? No. This is your client's cell phone. And on it, in an email, there's this. Soon we can come out of the dark. V. So you think I wrote that because it's signed with a V? No, I think you fell in love with your patient. That's called counter-transference in your profession. Or maybe you had some other reason to get rid of Jason Turner and you just used Derek as a tool. I'm not sure which of the two it is, but I'm pretty sure it's one of them. I have never sent him a message like that. I have never sent him more than a patient reminder. Patient reminder? For a patient that has OCD? Can I see that email? That's not my email address. Anyone could have created that address. Yeah. Do you think I'd expect someone to use their primary address when they're having an illicit affair? I give you much more credit than that, Doc. Give me a break. I'm done talking to you. Unless, of course, you would like to press charges. I need you to stay close to home. I didn't do this. No. Well, that's true, and somebody else did. They must be carrying the mother of all grudges. This happened before, with McNault. Were you angry when I left? I'd be lying if I said no. But that was quite some time ago. You left because you blamed our relationship for his death. Pretty consistent with the taser. Thanks.
press charges, ma'am? Honestly, Detective, I just want to know what she's doing here. Ma'am, you still know where you are? I'm at her house. She tased me. Victoria, I didn't know it was you. I'm a, her doctor. Uh, I will take responsibility from here. Are you okay? She's got a good point. What are you doing here? She's responsible for all of this. She hurt Jason. She manipulated Derek into breaking into my office, my home. What are you talking about? The taser. You tased him. Check it. Her fingerprints are going to be all over it. Of course they are. I've been carrying it since the break-in at the office. His DNA is going to be on it, too. I have not tased anyone except for you. Just cut the good girl act, will you? Check her computer, her phone records. You'll find the phony email address that she used with Derek. That's your phone there on the table? Yes. Can I have it? Take my phone, check my computer. I didn't do anything. Oh, God, she's behind all of this. She had access to everything. Well, was it so bad working for me? Did I treat you so poorly? Victoria, you need to calm down now. This is not helping. Oh, my God. Did you do this with her? <laughs> I mean, you were always more loyal to him. But you... I trusted you. <laughs> What was it, the book? Was it the money, the fame? I don't get it. I think I do want to press charges. Just please hold on, Victoria. Look at me. Look at me. Breathe in. Breathe in. That's it. Come on. Breathe in. Deep breath. And out. You're not thinking straight right now. Stay with me. Okay? I would not do anything to hurt you, ever. And neither would Nancy. Now you've got to stop these crazy accusations. None of this is helping. Okay? You're making it worse for yourself. Don't throw everything away. Because that's what's going to happen. You can do this. I'm sorry. I know that neither one of you would will do that, and uh, it's just everything with Derek and Jason has got me confused, and um, I I just let my imagination run wild. So, so I hope you accept my apology. So, where does that put us with pressing charges? No. All right. You're free to go. You okay? Considering. Just, uh, I thought I'd put it all behind me happening all over again. Derek wound up just like McNault. It's because of me. Derek is still alive. It's nothing like that. It's exactly the same. The worst case of my career is repeating itself. What about that hypnosis case? Blair, even you said it was like McNault. And that can't just be a coincidence. These cases are completely unrelated. The only thing that they have in common is you. Go on, go to bed. You have any problems, you need me for anything, you call me, okay? Anything. Thank you. Hello? 
for you. Blair? What's wrong? The dreams, they're back. Please help me. I thought I was strong enough. I thought I got better. You are strong enough. This is something that's buried deep in your subconscious. These things take time. The past couple of nights, I haven't felt like myself. Like I have no control. I thought of how easy it would be to just end it. Claire, we're going to get through this. I know how hard it is, trust me. No. You don't know how hard this is. Actually, I do. You know that first book I wrote on hypnotherapy, the one that you and two other people read? <laughs> <laughs> what about it? That was actually based on a real patient. That patient, Dylan. He took his life. I failed him as a doctor. I let him get too close and then when I pulled away, it destroyed him. I've been haunted by his memory for years. Even still, some mornings I wake up and I'm drenched with sweat. Remembering, regretting. So, I do know how it feels to have that hole in your heart. A piece of you that'll never grow back. Can you stay here tonight? Of course. be a good idea. That's... You want to kill me? I would never do that. Is that what you did to Dylan? Did he actually kill himself? Or did you pull the trigger? Are 
you strong enough? To do the right thing? It's okay. Whatever happens next. himself under my care. Do you, do you understand how devastating that was? Every day I ask myself, what could I have done differently? What did I miss? What didn't I see? He was sick. Blair, he was sick. And I know that we both did everything that we could to save him. Will you please let me help you? No. 
Watching your life destroyed around you is all the help I need. It's not gonna last. You know it's not gonna last. Even if you don't regret what you did to me. What about Jason? What about Derek? You hurt them both. They didn't even know your brother. Dylan loved you. Stop talking about him. Why? That's why we're here, right? That's why you did all this. He's gone. <laughs> this isn't gonna bring him back. <laughs> I loved him so much. He was my everything. <laughs> I loved him so much. Sure, lucky the neighbor heard that gunshots. He wouldn't be here. You have a very strange definition of lucky. What's gonna happen with her? She got a lot to answer for. And she sure needs a lot more help than a jail cell can afford her. You're a strange gal, Doc. Someone tries to kill you and you ask if she's going to be okay. <laughs> I'm a doctor. So what's his protocol? Just leave it with me. He'll be fine. I'd like monthly reports. Yes, doctor. Monthly reports it will be. Thank you. How's your other patient? She doing okay? Blair's gonna take a lot of recovery. But I think she's finally ready to start healing. Good. It's good to hear. Maybe this time just don't write a book about it. <laughs> That's some good advice. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a long awaited vacation to attend to. Huh. Well, you're a hard girl to whisk away. So worth it. Yes, you are. <laughs> Not that it's gone to your head or anything. You know what? I've learned I'm pretty scrappy in a fist fight. You might not want to mess with me. <clears throat> I won't mess with you. Well, you have a whole week with nothing to do but mess with me. Don't threaten me with a good time. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah? I'm beginning to wonder if you really liked me or not. You always have this wall up. Yeah. That wall's coming down now. I'm ready.
Thank <laughs> you. 